So we see we have chimers here today. And they are from right to left, Chelsea Van, Jamie Kalama, Kimberly Wooldridge, and Karen Meyer. And we're going to do uh, a little Carol of the Bells with chimes. And we have Derek also adding in on the trumpet. Here we go. You're all ready to join us on our first sing-along song, The Holy, Holy Way. You'll stand. The lyrics will be there, and we've got our song leaders to lead us on our way.
welcome to the holidays. One of the most wonderful times of the year. Naturally, every day can be a holiday. So here at the center, we honor all paths to God. Uh, so no matter where you are, whoever you are, you're welcome here. And we are a center that believes that um, there are many paths to God, as many paths as there are people on this planet. So we begin each service with our call to service, which is the lighting of the flames of faith. And we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner, Faith Mackey lights the last candle. Let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Please join me in prayer ah, as we join together this morning in that, in that amazing energy of oneness, that glorious power that is present right here and right now in this moment, in this room, in through and as each one of us. I know that it is beating every heart. It is breathing in through and as each one of us. It is that, that love, it is that, that peace and that beauty and that wholeness that absolutely is always present. And each one of us here is its expression. And as we go forth today, ah, we are reminded of this truth. We are reminded of the truth of our, our connection with the one, of our connection with each other of the celebration of life that we get to experience any moment we choose. And I know that each one of us leaves here with that consciousness of celebration, of love, of peace in their hearts. And that as we connect with each other, as we take in the beauty of the moment, each moment, we are absolutely lifted, inspired, and moved. And so with great gratitude for, for this time together and for 
each, each one here that brings their own gift. I am so grateful. And I simply let go. I release my word into law. I know it is done. And please join me in saying, And yes. so it is. And now I'd like to invite Reverend Judy up for our affirmation. Thank you, Reverend Karen. Let's do our declaration together. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence, operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And now this morning's affirmation. I humanly awaken to my spiritual magnificence by making my contribution to a world that works for everyone, and so it is. Thank you so much, Reverend Judy. Please welcome the Jules Home Choir. And Derek Stopper on trumpet and Jules Vogel on piano and our fabulous band.
happy holy days. Hello. Happy holy days. It's, that's what holidays are certain from, holy days, and we're reflecting the truth in the holy days. And um, my, my message is Science of Mind and Hanukkah, because we've been looking at the various traditions, and uh, next week it'll be all about Christmas, and even though, and last week was all about the solstice, and the solstice and Hanukkah will begin on the 22nd. But we couldn't do all three at once, so here we are. <laughs> Happy Holy Days. The, um, the notes for this um, lesson were prepared by my teacher, Sue Rubin. At the, it's just like listening to her talk. It's like, God is, I am, and that's that. And anyway, it, it was quite fun. Imagine her saying these things. Of course, she was raised Jewish, so she certainly has a deep value and deep understanding of Hanukkah. And remember, we're looking at Joseph Campbell's idea that it isn't the history, it's not the literary, literal facts, it's the metaphor that we're looking at. What is the metaphor? So, and because this is not a synagogue, but rather a New Thought church, I think I better give you a little bit of background about what the history is, even though we're not going to dwell on that. So the history of Hanukkah is approximately 2,300 years ago, so 200 years before Christ. There was, um, there, there, the Jews, there was a rebellion, they're Jewish, there was a Jewish rebellion against the Greek Syrians, and there was quite a bloodbath, evidently, and the temple was desecrated. The temple is the holy place where the Ark of the Covenant is kept, it's the holy place, and they, um, the Romans had um, dedicated the temple, they had rededicated it to Zeus. Which was, a de which was a desecration as far as the Jewish people were concerned. Um, and also they were slaughtering pigs in the temple. Now, that sounds horrible, but you'd have to put it in perspective. The Jewish people would actually have been slaughtering lambs and chickens and beef. It's just that it was pigs, and it was just that it was dedicated to Zeus, which was not the one God. So the miracle of Hanukkah, the miracle of the dedication of this temple is that there was enough oil to have the candles, the candelabra, burn for one day. And the miracle was that it burned for eight days. Or as some historians said, they celebrated for eight days. <laughs> I kind of like that one, that they celebrated for eight days, but nevertheless, that is the reason why Hanukkah is celebrated now is celebrating the faith of the true believers who were believing in the one God and the holiness of the temple and that this holy place would be respected. And so then we look at what do we, what can we get from this old story? What can we, because you, I've said this every time I do the Christmas story, I say it whenever I quote scripture, it isn't so much about what happens. It's about what is it that we think about what happens. What meaning can we bring to it today? Because if we can't bring meaning to it today, it has no part of our service. It has no part of our spirituality. The history itself, isn't really worth something, it's the what does the history mean to us? How can we, how can we embrace it today? What is there for us today? So, and so here we are, right in the smack dab in the holy days that all of these religions happen to have at the very same time here. We started with Buddhism and then the pagan tradition of the solstice, <laughs> and now the Jewish tradition, and then next week, Christmas. So all of these things had to do with light, with light. And Ernest Holmes said this in his Sermon by the Sea. He said, 
Everything that lives proclaims the glory of God. There is one spirit in which we live, one mind by which we think, one body of which we are a part, and one light that lighteth every man's pathway. One light, one spirit, one mind, one body, and it's the same, no matter where we are in the world or who's celebrating it. What we, what we know that light means, it means understanding. It means a greater perception of the things that we're looking at. So, the Maccabees um, rebelled and they dedicated the temple and the candles burned for eight days, a miracle. And now they celebrate it by lighting a candle every day so that by the end of the eight days, all eight candles are blazing. And what does it mean to us? Well, it's clearly means, so that it was a rededication of the temple. The original temple had been built a thousand years before, more than a thousand years before, and then it had been um, destroyed. And that was one of the wonderful things about being in Italy last year. I got to see that this history of the, <laughs> how, how many of the things that, and how old they are, but they were once, and then they were destroyed, and they were rebuilt, and then they were destroyed, and then rebuilt. And so, with the temple, it had been rebuilt in about 500 BC, but then it had been invaded. So it was called the new temple, the second temple. And it was, um, it was then, um, after this rebellion, was rededicated. And that became a tradition every year at that time to rededicate. So what does that say to us? I think it has to say, what are we doing? What are our spiritual practices? What is it, what is it that we have committed to? So a year ago, did we commit to, did we pledge to do our spiritual practices faithfully? You, well, I talk about this all the time. Did we pledge that we were going to do our readings, and we were going to do our journaling every single day. And did we pledge that we were going to be without complaint? <laughs> and how are we doing on that? <laughs> did we pledge that we were not going to hold anger or bitterness or blame? How are we doing on that? Excellent. Good. <laughs> One voice in the wilderness calls out, excellent. Let's hear everybody. It, it's, it's never too late to recommit. We don't have to wait for Hanukkah. We don't have to wait for a special occasion for us to say, today is the time to reconnect, to recommit, to rededicate ourselves to living a spiritual life to living a life that's filled with grace and joy and love and forgiveness, to living a life that is filled with the light of God, the light of love. And the only one that can do that is you for you, your life and me for mine. So I'm inviting you today to, to commit, to do your practices to commit to being part of this commu community. If you got a program, and I know some of you didn't because you were already busy, but if you got a program, you'll see in it that there is a pledge card. You have one if you got the program. If you didn't get a program, it looks like this. It looks like this. The envelope has my name on it because you're going to send it to me, or are you going to put it in the pledge box? So here's the request. If you consider yourself a member of this community, even if you did it last year, or you did it five years ago, or you said, nah, I don't, I don't belong to anything. That's not for me. Reconsider. 
without your without us collectively making a decision that this is our home and we support it we wouldn't be able to provide any of the things here so i want to i want you to look at the card and i'm going to read it to you because you may not have it in your program you might have picked up picked up a program that didn't have one in Although I personally put all of these together yesterday, so I know they are feet. <laughs> On the outside, it says my financial commitment. Then it has a place for your name, full name, please. Please print your address, your city, state, phone, zip, and email. Why do we need all those things? Because that's how we keep track of you. If we want to send you something, we need those, that information. Signature and date, and we're going to come back to then what it says, because that's the main thing. On the other side, turn it over, please. I sound like Buzz. My cat is so bossy. He's very, very bossy, but he's adorable. So on the other side, there are four parts. Step one, please check one. This is my first pledge to this center, check, or this is my continuation of my ongoing support to this center, check. Step two, I plan to support my spiritual center financially in the amount of blank. And it can be the smallest amount you can imagine or the largest amount you can imagine. There's no right or wrong. We appreciate everyone, but then make sure if you put, you're going to support it at, let's say $5 a week, circle week as well as putting in the five because otherwise we'll think we'll guess and actually i guess big reverend karen guesses small <laughs> <laughs> so i would go oh five dollars must be a week well she might go oh that's for a whole year doesn't matter what it is but please circle one step three please check one and this is just you know we teach the spiritual practice of tithing you don't have to be a tither to fill out this card, but you, if you are a tither, we'd like you to check that you're a tither. Why? Because then I know what your dedication is to your spiritual practice. If you're on your way to being a tither, you give X percent, or I'm a committed giver. One of those three, not all three. And then let, step four, would you like personal contribution on, well, this is really to support Rip so that she knows that if she's going to make one for you, you're going to use it and not have them sit there all year. Now, turn it back over to the front. <laughs> I love this sentence. Recognizing that the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley, is my spiritual home, I joyfully and lovingly commit to its well-being. How good is that? I joyfully and lovingly commit to its well-being. I make my pledge fully aware that I am the one who makes the difference. Are you aware of that? <laughs> you are the one that makes the difference. It's not me, it's not the rest of the ministers, it's not the practitioners, it's not the board of the trustees, it's all of us. It's all of us. If you are, if that, this is not for you, use the practice of committing. You know, um, my favorite, my favorite um, quote on commitment was by W. H. Murray, and who is the Scottish um, Himalayan explorer? He never did get. He got to the base camp. He didn't get to the summit, but he was uh, imprisoned during the Second World War for almost a whole war. And how he survived was he imagined himself climbing the mountains. He visualized himself climbing the mountains. And this is what he said about commitment. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back concerning all acts of initiative and creation. There is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. I have a short story that I want to tell you. 
there was a man with a small candle, and he was climbing up a long, long <coughs> stairway, and the candle said, what can I do? I'm just a small candle, and I won't make any difference whatsoever. He kept climbing and climbing, and the, and the man said to the candle, you just do your part. Stay lit, and I will do my part. And so he climbed and climbed, he climbed to the top, and there, the top of the lighthouse, there was a lamp. He used the candle to light the lamp, and the light, the lamp, has all of these mirrors that make all, magnify all of the light in that one <coughs> lamp, from that one candle, that is seen by all of the ships in that area, and therefore provide them safety and knowledge of where the rocks are, where this lighthouse is. We are that one candle, each one of us. We may think that by ourselves we don't make a difference. We may think that we can't do enough good just by being ourselves. But by being ourselves and really shining our light, we encourage everybody else to shine theirs too. So let this day be the day you really do make a pledge, maybe not to the center, but maybe, but to yourself, to your spiritual practices, to the truth of your being, to really let that light of love that you are shine from you with fullness and beauty. You are the one that makes the difference, and so it is. So it is. In this holy moment of right now, here's what I know. I know that all is well and all shall be well. I know that that Christ light shines out from each one of us as the truth of our being. And knowing that it is everywhere present, that the presence of God truly indwells everything, and knowing that I am one with it, I speak my word. I speak it for myself and anyone who agrees to it. Today, I recommit myself. I recommit myself to my spiritual truth, to the wholeness that I am, to the difference that I make. I pledge myself to be so firm in doing my spiritual practices that it's unthinkable not to do them. I do them, and I do them with joy, and that joy ignites even more joy within me. Doing my spiritual practices ensures that I see the world rightly. I see God everywhere. I see love everywhere. I see the truth of being everywhere, and the wholeness of being everywhere. I see the goodness that I am, the greatness that I am, right here in this very place. Today, recommitting myself to my truth, re-pledging myself to make a difference here and everywhere. I truly let my light shine, and letting my light shine, I see myself as prosperous. I see myself as healthy, whole, and complete. I see myself as filled with joy and creativity, love and light. I see myself with friends and family enjoying these holy days. It is good and very good, and I'm so grateful that it is so. And with my heart filled with gratitude, I simply place this word in law. I know it's done, and please help me. And so it is. And now the Jewel Tones Choir. This next song is called December Child, very appropriate, and it features, very proud to say, my daughter on the solo. 
Chelsea Band, and our beautiful choir. Stewards would please come forward. And we begin this process by reading our affirmation together, which is going to appear momentarily. There it is. We read it together and then we take a few seconds to be grateful because gratitude is a multiplier. And then we're going to um, and we're going to sing, I send my love, and then we're going to have a Jewish song in celebration of Hanukkah. <sighs> so our prosperity affirmation, please join me. 
My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply.
was wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jewel Tones, for that and for the first numbers. It was just a wonderful service. Let's acknowledge it again. The majority of our choir are volunteers, and I'm going to acknowledge the volunteers right now. And I want you to pay attention, those of us who are not in the choir. Every single one of the choir is standing, and they, many of them have other volunteer duties as well. If you're a volunteer this week or this today, please stand so we can give you a lot of love. Lots and lots and lots of love. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And then if the practitioners remain standing, the practitioners are trained in the art and science of, of a permanent prayer. And if you want your life transformed, make an appointment with one of these people, you'll be so happy you did. The people who are in service today Faith Mackey, Reverend Judy Chapman, and Joanne Leone. You will find them at the affirmative prayer tables or in the tranquility room, and you will receive a taste of what you would get in a private consultation. Let's acknowledge our practitioners. If you are here for the very first time, we're really happy that you came, and we have a special gift for you, and all you need to do is raise your hand or stand up or indicate that that's you and it'll be delivered right to you. Nope. Seeing no one indicating that they are here for the first time, let's just acknowledge each other. Please repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening today. It's this thing called me. Something wonderful is happening today. It's this thing called me. And it's this thing called you. And it's this thing called you. It's this thing called life. It's this thing called life. Life is by means of us. Life is by means of us. It's good and very good. It's good and very good. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. Do we have announcements? We do. Did you know that Jennifer Creed is in the house? There she is, because after the service, yay, she is having her messages from spirit and group healing. So there's more information in your program if you want more information about it. Conscious Connection will meet from 12 to 12.30 today in the multi-purpose room to discuss today's message and child care is available. And this week at Wednesday's Wisdom, Lee and Dina, there they are, Vance Yay. Likes, will present Zambia. So come at 7 and share in their experience. Next Sunday, December 22nd, Michael Paul Smith will be sharing his music with us during the service and then will provide us with a concert of Christmas music afterwards. If you're not already feeling the Christmas spirit, this is sure to help you get there. It's presented on a love offering basis. And guess what's happening on Christmas Eve? Candle our Christmas Eve service. Yeah. <laughs> We're having our annual candle lighting service and this is a time when um, we share the story of the birth of Jesus and, and with music and candle lighting and we get to, as Dr. Heather mentioned, um, kind of see how that Christ consciousness um, fills us up and how we can use that in our lives. So it starts, the, the caroling starts at 4.30, sing-alongs at 4.45 and the service starts at 5 o'clock. And bring your family and your friends. Yes. On Tuesday morning, December 31st Yay! at 4 a.m., yes. join practitioner Patrick Freeman and several other early risers for the World Peace Meditation. This will be an opportunity to collectively focus on world peace along with thousands, perhaps millions, of other people around the world all at the same time. Greenwich Mean Time. And here it's a mean time. <laughs> See Patrick if you have any questions. And, and Rick, I'm buying breakfast. Whoever shows Patrick's up. Patrick's buying breakfast. Yeah, so. free breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Starting on January 5th, 2020. Oh my gosh, 2020. Sign to Mind 102 class, The Nature of Effective Prayer Begins. And Aiden Greeny is facilitating that. And there's a sign-up sheet on the kiosk. There's always so much going on here at CSLCV, so take your inserts home with you and look it over. Now, release the children. Hold those children. Oh, sorry, Josh. Hello, there I am. I just want you to, to stay for post salute today because it's a special treat. That's it. Now let the kitties in. <laughs> 